Hey, I'm in a phone now. Today I'd like to talk about something that we are all familiar with. Gamer moments. You know them when you see them. When you don't need your dad's help connecting those confusing wires to the back of the TV, that's a gamer moment. When you stay alive for 14 days in Fortnite, now that is a moment for gamers. When you find a sussy little vent man trying to crewmate you, that is a gamer moment. These moments are those sweet achievements that keep the gamers coming back. So legendary you'd make any political talking head turn around and tweet, Okay, now this, this is epic. epic. But did you know that there was a time when gamer moments didn't even exist? Tennis for two in the 1950s made people shit their pants. I'm just kidding, nobody gave a rat's ass about that game. But for the people who did give a rat's ass about this game, they were like, Whew, we take a sport and we put it in a computer and now it's a game. Tennis is in the game. Thus, the very first commercial gamer moment was created. This was the video game caveman era, or should I say, the invention of Tennis for Two was the mysterious theorized meteor which contained H2O creating the beginning of the Hadean era of video games. The very first poggers moment. And for my paleontology buffs, you may be able to theorize that the commercial spread of consoles and arcade cabinets during the boom of the Atari would be considered the Cambrian Explosion. Everyone was developing shitty games. Everyone was playing shitty games. But with all that aside, the gamer moment became the gamer movement. But the problem was that these games were so terrible that you really had to use your imagination. In fact, in some situations, you needed to put overlays on your TV to know what the fuck was going on. It wasn't until the late 80s until things started to get good. Oh, you know them all. You had Mario, you had Pac-Man, you had DuckTales. And on the same year as DuckTales, you had a little video game called Sim City. This was a city building video game. Eventually goals were added, but for the most part the fun came from building something from nothing. You put yourself in the shoes of a city planner. You make zones and pay for taxes and stuff. So why did people like this game? Why the fuck did it get a sequel? I'm over here playing Star Wars. You're trying to tell me that trying to fix traffic congestion problems was more fun than trying to kill Darth Vader? Why? 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 Why do people find simulation video games so fun? Well, they do say that variety is the spice of life. With so many action-adventure games, only a handful of them will be worth your time to play. Enter the video game developer challenge. How do we make this game worth your time to play? Take Sonic, for example. Sonic surfaced from the ocean of shitty Mario clones by tweaking the formula in such a way that made it stand out and this passed with flying colors. Electronic Arts knew that they had to tweak their city planning simulator because it was obviously way too much fun of a concept. So they went with the most logical step forward. Ants, genius move on their part. Most people have never done any city planning, but most of everyone has stared at a congregation of ants. If they made anything besides this bleeding edge title, they would be just another Exidy Games. You know Exidy, the developers of Circus Atari? Didn't think so. But most importantly, this was a rule created by EA. The rule? There were no rules. There were some interesting titles developed, but what I want to point at is this game right here, Harvest Moon. This wasn't just a farm simulator, it was also a relationship simulator. You took on another person's life and occupation, and while it was limited and somewhat touched on in other games, this concept was groundbreaking, and a lot of people considered it to be their happy place game. But why? Don't people have their own lives and occupations? Why is it so appealing to take on the life of a simple farmer? Here's why I get caught up. I've gone to work before. It's not fun. In fact, I'm willing to say that it's not fun at all. But what kind of work was I doing to make it not fun? Well, I was following orders. I was making food and drinks at a restaurant. Is that fun? I mean, sometimes. I mean, it doesn't have to not be fun. But I didn't want to go home after a shift at a restaurant and play Restaurant Simulator. Okay, let's just try it out so I understand the appeal to these games. All right, let's lay this boring game out. I get to choose the name of the restaurant. I get to choose which kinds of foods I serve. Choose the upgrades I get to... Hold on, I get to choose things? Hold on, I get to, like, pick things that happen in my workplace? If I don't like something, I get to change it? So, like, I'm the boss. Does it matter? I'm just the person who gets to make decisions. I'm not being exploited. I'm not required to do the same mundane tasks over and over again. 
The money I make, I can spend on things other than food and rent? Okay, I get it now. This is fun. This is fun. It's fun because it's sadly unrealistic. All right, I'm sorry I gotta do this. I gotta pull out old Karl Marcus. That old fuck. Marx was an optimist. He thought that humans were collaborative and engaged in communality. He simply thought that capitalism was incompatible with humans, the same way that he thought that feudalism and slavery were incompatible with humanity. There will always be an economic system in society. Eventually, a class conflict will arise, creating momentum for economic change. It's a little thing that Marx won't shut the fuck up about called species being. Marx thought that humans were pretty cool, and they had a desire to uplift themselves together through the economy. You know, gamers rise up, but gamers are the proletariat. Now this doesn't seem related to my points, but trust me, species being has everything to do with why we enjoy simulators. Or at least job simulators. The reason why jobs are so mundane and horrible is because workers are separated from the production. I get no say in what goes on if I work at Applebee's. Every steak must be the exact same as the last steak. If I put a single ounce of extra steak on a plate, I get in trouble for denting into profit margins. So why the fuck should I care about the steak? I go home and I forget about the steak. I have no connection to the food that I serve to customers. Work has nothing to do with me as a person. When I cook staff meals though, I go hard. I treat that bitch like some art. I put my foot in that food and it's fun. Making that meal was labor. I could sell this specialty steak. Work isn't a separated process from my being when I made this. It was an extension of my being. If I had the power and agency to make this food for customers, then Applebee's would be the best job ever. But I'm not suggesting that work should be like this crazy example I made up where every worker can do whatever the fuck they want, whenever they want. I'm suggesting that labor is an expression of humanity. Work would be a lot better if we were treated as humans instead of living parts of the machine. If this wasn't true, then why would pretending to farm be any fun at all? It shouldn't be fun in a rational sense, but it is. And it is because in this electronic universe, you are in complete control over production and the labor that you produce. In Stardew Valley, every penny that you make from selling produce goes to your pocket. You do not pay rent in that game. You choose what to farm. You could choose how to do it, and you could choose how to spend the money you make. This is why this game is so fun. I mean, other reasons too, but imagine if these elements were not in the game. It would be fucking boring. Could you imagine if in Farming Simulator 2000, you just played as some teenager who hauls bags around for five hours and only gets paid like 50 bucks? Like who would play that? And sure, ultra specific, realistic task simulators might just play into people's special interests. But a recurring theme with flight simulator, truck simulator, lawn mowing simulator, whatever simulator, is that you are in control of the labor. If a certain task or mission sounds boring, you don't choose it. These games shouldn't be called job simulators, they should be called agency simulators. The reason why jobs seem horrible and inescapable is because the average worker holds no power. When authority in workplaces become less harsh, conditions improve, people become happier. All right, let me summarize my argument thus far. The reason why simulation games are so much fun is because they provide a feeling that is unachievable for most people. That feeling of being connected to your labor. When you simulate labor, the fun comes from the control you have over the labor. Let's say that there's a game called Factory Simulator. Is the fun part building a factory and choosing what it produces and how? Or is the fun part being on an assembly line and doing the same task over and over and over and over and over again until you clock out? It's not the latter. It's fun because you engage in creative labor. It's fun because there is no boss person telling you to step in line. It's fun because you choose how the money that your workplace makes gets spent on the business. It's fun because humans naturally engage in labor, and it turns out labor can be a lot of fun. It's not fun, however, to rationalize every single output of labor. It's not fun to never see the fruits of your labor. It's not fun to have the feeling of, well, it doesn't matter. If I have a problem with something, it's not like anybody's gonna listen to me. But it is fun to say something like, fuck it, I'm only farming and selling coffee beans from now on. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Ketchup Bottling Simulator will be the next big streaming game. Anyways, support unions, support workers, fuck Amazon, fuck billionaires, fuck you if you don't like and subscribe, I will shit on your mom.